Hello, ROS developers. How are you doing? I'm here waiting to start with the, with the class of today. I'm very happy to have here again, and I'm having my coffee, yes, as always. And I'm getting ready for, you know, mentally ready for the class. And today we are going to continue in this series of live classes that are we are doing about the robot navigation in different senses. So today, what we are going to do is to mix the information from an odometry sensor and an IMU sensor in order to produce a better odometry. This better odometry is sometimes is, is required. Uh, for example, I remember when I was working on Power Robotics, we were building those human-sized humanoid robots that have to move along the in a space that there were was very crowded because they were like kind of protocol uh, robots they have to interact with the people so we were using the islam techniques for that we created a map and localization but what happened that it was so crowded there that actually the map that we built was useless at some point in time at some point when the robot was crossing those areas with many people because the laser cannot detect the parts of the wall you know because it was uh, occluded by the people then what we devised was a system for uh, the robot detecting that is in a crowded situation and then switch its uh, navigation system from a map base to an odometry base so when the robot was moving around and then it was detecting the wall, so good, very good, we go here, we go there. At some point in time, they say, oh, 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 too many people around me and, and they are including my laser, so I cannot detect the walls and, and see the map. Okay, let's switch to odometry. Then from that point in time, the robot was moving only based on odometry. So he could move in the same way, could go to places, but it was based on odometry. And you know what happens when you move in odometry way well, that some error is going accumulated over time. So if you keep your robot moving in odometry for a long time, then at the end it will be completely lost. So at that point, what we wanted to have is to have a very, very good odometry, because the better the odometry, then the more the longer the time that you can make the robot move based only on odometry. Okay, so that's just an example, okay, that happened to us, and uh, that's one application, but there are many. So I will leave that to you for uh, uh, making applications that need this fusion of odometry with IMU in order to get a better, more precise odometry. Okay, guys, so let me see who is here on the chat, and I can see that there is, uh, so Haro, that's saying hello, Haro, Uchena, uh, hello, uh, Junjuan, as always, and Diego also, as always, Commander Cisco, of course. And uh, then, <laughs> yeah, let's connect with us, yes. Stefan, hello, Thomas, and Mario Groschar. Hello, everyone, and all the others that are 40 uh, people at the class at, at right now. And I'm happy to have you here. And then uh, there is uh, one, <laughs> one question I can see here on the chat that says, Hey, what is odometry? Okay, that's a very good question. Yeah, so I should have to start from the beginning. So uh, I suspect I was thinking that, that that was already known, but of course, this live class is not for any level. So if you have those questions, then please ask me because then I will know that you don't know and then I can provide you uh, a, a, an answer and you can follow. Well, the odometry is basically is the computation that makes the robot of how much it has moved. So the robot is moving, is, is here, then it, what it does usually, it's, it has some encoders on the wheels that detect how much the wheels have rotated. Then based on that measurement of the sensor of the encoder, then there are some mathematical equations that can compute how much the robot has moved from the initial position where you switch on the robot. So you, you start the robot, you press the power on button or the robot here, that's the zero of the odometry. And then it starts to move the robot. It uses those computations. And then it says, okay, from the original location, you have moved one meter, 
forward and uh, half a meter to the right or to the left, whatever. So that's the computation of the odometry. And this is very prone to errors. So many, many errors. I hope that this uh, uh, is more or less answer. Okay. So more people here coming. Rafael, hello. Avik and Lucas, of course. Lucas, how are you doing? Uh, White Lie. White Lie, very nice, uh, very nice nickname. Uh, Vishnu Prasad, and hello. And Luis Sierra. Okay, we have done say hello to some of the people, hello to all the rest, and let's go to the work. How, what are we going to do? Well, the first thing is to get the Rosjet of today's class. You know, the Rosjet, the one that contains the code, the simulations, the notebook, the instructions, so you can follow with me right now. You can do the same steps as I am doing, okay, by using the Rosjet. So what I'm going to do is to put a Rosjet link on the chat, and then you click on that link, and you will get a copy of the material that I'm going to use myself right now on the explanation. And of course, you reproduce at the same time the, the steps that I am doing on the camera. Okay? <clears throat> so let's go to that to work and let me share with you my screen so you can, um, you can see what I'm doing in order to share. So let's go here. Many buttons. It's, 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 it's too many buttons. And then let's start sharing the screen. So here you can see my ROS development studio. I was working on it, of course, until the last minute. You know, this is so much work to prepare those live classes. And sometimes it, things work. And then at the end, we have some changes in, in last time. Well, anyway, so this is the ROS of today, OK? Live class 51, how to fuse odometry. And then this is the ROS that I have created for this class. I'm going to share that with you. How do I do that? by clicking on this icon here that says share. And then I will copy the link that I have here and put it on the chat. So now you, you are going to see, if you go to the chat, now you are going to see that I'm putting the link there. You only need to click on that link and you will get an exact copy of my material, the one that I have here. OK, so far, so good. So let me close my previous tab. So I will start with you. So once you have this, this uh, copy, just press on the image. OK, press on this image that you will get and then press open project. If you press that, you are going to get this kind of a screen that I am having here. OK, so it's initializing the computer, getting the files, and preparing everything and getting there. In the meantime, I can have some coffee. And also I can see in the chat if there is any question, any problem or else. Remember that you can ask me questions during along the, this, uh, this live class and then I will be keeping more or less an eye on it and uh, try to, to answer the question. So do not worry about the questions. You can ask whatever. And I will try to, whatever related to the class. I mean, don't, please don't ask me about how to do a robotic manipulator right now because, because it's, not, it's not the situation now. It's not the subject of today. Then Naman is asking, which IMU are you using? Uh, oh, so we are using the Summit Excel robot. And then for that, uh, well, that's taking too long. I don't know why. It should have already opened. Well, and then in any case, if we go to the Summit XL robot, it's a robot that is built by a company called Robotnik. And then you can check the specifications of the robot here. I have a link on the notebook. Okay, so here, oh, yeah, okay, so we have already opened. Then, uh, but anyway, let me show you here that this is a company. Those are our friends from Robotnik, super cool guys very professional and very cool robots and raw material that they are producing and selling. So I highly recommend that you buy your, your material there for your robots or even the whole robots. Then here you have the data sheet that you can download and then you will get the, the, the data from the GPS. 
In our case here today, we are using just an IMU simulated IMU in gazebo. So I mean, is the so it's it's a simulation only. So it provides very good values and all that stuff. Okay. Any other question before everybody is on is on time? Uh, and then Kashi says, how can we calculate odometry using IMU? Is there any ROS package available? You cannot compute the odometry using the IMU only. You need something else. And then is because the odometry, the IMU is not providing, is, is providing only the accelerations and the rotational speeds. So you don't have enough in order to compute the odometry. In then you need something that is providing you a, a change in the position in some way. In some way, so for that you need either uh, an encoder on the wheels, either you need a camera that can do visual odometry, or you can use a laser that provides compute odometry, also based on the laser. So, um, yeah, so that's that it. Okay, let's go, guys. Um, there are no more questions. Then let's go. Um, here is for the material that this is the notebook okay that comes with the rush jet i hope that you all of you have it in case that you close it for whatever the reason you can close it here oh where is my notebook where is just go to tools and then select jupiter notebook again and then you will get it here so it's as simple as that okay so here you can have more notebooks if you want you can put all of them there uh, in that case, on, we only have one, it's like for class 51. Press on there and it will load. It will load, yeah. Okay, so far so good. Then uh, what are we going to do? Um, is uh, Well, the first thing is, is why it is needed to use sensor data for navigation. I already explained that to you. It's because uh, the odometry has um, a lot of error, so you would like to have a better odometry. Then you can use other sensors in order to improve that odometry and get better odometry for navigation. So in this case, we are going to use the IMU in order to identify if the robot has actually moved or not. But actually, we are not going to see how it works in the inside. How it works in the inside is by using an, a Kalman filter. And this Kalman filter is the Kalman filter is the one that we are using to fuse both sensors data. And it is already implemented here in the robot localization package. That's an amazing package that uh, provides us these Kalman filters already done. So we only have to provide which topics are we going to fuse from information in which conditions, which from those topics, which information are we going to use? And then at the end, we get an odometry filter that is a better odometry. Okay, so uh, that's the robot localization package. And today we are going to apply also to the Summit XL robot by Robotnik, as I explained to you. And it has other, this robot has, apart from the IMU, it has some other sensors like the camera or the GPS, etc. By the way, the robot localization package is the one that you would use if you want to do GPS, GPS based localization. So this robot localization package is like a Swiss army, a Swiss army knife for localization. It can, it takes everything as you are going to see here in a drawing. And uh, this, uh, well, just to let you know that this is a Rajet. What we call here is a Rajet that contains this notebook, contains some, um, some code. It also contains sometimes simulations. And everything is packaged in this, in this system that we call a Rajet. And then you can open it. Remember that you can download this information at any point in time. So you go to Tools, open the IDE, and then here you have all the files that this Rosjet contains. So, for example, I have included here uh, an Arby's configuration file. I have here in the notebooks, here are the images and the text that I have created for today's notebooks. In dataset, there is nothing, but here in Catkin Workspace, there is a, a, pack, a package that I have created to add noise to the odometry of the simulation. We are going to see that in a minute. 
Okay, so all that you can download, you press here and then download, then you will get all the code and you can run it in your computer or mobile. Remember that, okay? Well, let's go. So, uh, yeah, so uh, what I wanted to tell you, I already explained, but uh, here is, is kind of in order, okay? So why do we need to fuse sensor data? Well, because this is a very nice drawing that shows the odometry's trajectory, and you can see that it's going, the odometry trajectory is going like crazy, just in a loop. Then the robot's actual trajectory is the one in blue, and you can see that it's quite different from the, from the odometry at some point in time. So it's because odometry is an error that is, gets accumulated over time. So over time, over time, over time, there is more error, more error. It's more different from the actual position of the robot. And then you have in red, it's a particle filter. Okay, particle filter is not the case that we are doing here today about a better odometry. It's even more powerful, okay? It's by using a, a particle filter for uh, implementing an, uh, an Islam algorithm that, uh, that uses the laser extra information from the outside to correct the error of the odometry. But in this case, we are not doing this. One, the, we, we saw this in previous live classes. Today, what we are going to do is to do a better odometry. So this error is smaller. Still, we are going to have an error, okay? So by doing what we are doing now, it's still we are going to have it. But in some situations, like the one I explained to you at the beginning of the class, it's, it's that is enough for make the system work. So it's less uh, complex system. Then what is the robot localization package? It's a ROS package that you can check the documentation and it can do many, many things. But basically what it, it implements is a common filter for fusing data from many things. And um, here you can see two of the things of, that this, this package can do. One is to mix information from localization systems and get a better localization or even use a GPS for localization. And the other option is to produce a better odometry based on different sensors that are producing information related to the odometry. That's a case that we are going to touch today, okay? In this case, we are going to mix IMU and wheel encoders. That's the odometry, basic odometry of a wheel robot. But you, can, you could also get odometry from a visual odometry, uh, from a barometer, from a laser, so those are options that you can apply the same concepts that we are seeing here today. Okay, so first thing, let's just start. Let's launch the Summit Excel simulation because it's the one that we are going to use today. So that is very simple. Go to simulations and then here in the list of robots, go down until you see the Summit Excel that is here and press there. Then the simulation is going to appear here. Okay, let me put it here, for example. Then in the meantime, let me check if there is any question. Wow, too many questions. Oof, many, many questions. Okay. Um, can you talk about transforms? Okay, uh, Commander Cisco, please be more precise about that. Hello, thanks for this video, man, you are awesome. Okay, uh, thank you, Alper. Uh, Kashif says, are we fusing Joe angle from IMU and Joe angle calculated by individual wheel velocity and then use it for the uh, to calculate XI via XVI of the robot. Yes, so yes, you are going on the right direction. You are going to see by the end of the uh, of the notebook what which which um, components of the odometry and of the IMU that we are going to use. So the the, the, the only ones that make sense for this kind of robot. Remember that this is like a differential drive robot. So some components are not necessary of the IMU because never are going to produce any data. Then Mario says, does it make sense to fuse GPS into an EKF to produce odometry? Or is it a better approach making additional use of GPS? Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't make very sense for that. So because GPS is not an odometry. Remember that an odometry is something that is intrinsic to the robot 
It means is something that the robot computes by itself without sensing outside, let's say. See, without sensing outside. So GPS is more like a global, it's from the outside that says, hey, you are here because all those satellites around the, the, the earth that are providing, telling you, hey, you are here. So GPS, <coughs> sorry, GPS, it's a direct, um, uh, it's a localization system and the robot lo localization package shows you how to use the GPS for localization. If you have GPS, then very good. You are safe, let's say. Are we going uh, to use uh, UKF or EKF? It doesn't matter actually for those results. And if I have to be sincere, I don't really know the difference in practice of those, those, of those common filters. One is the extended Kalman filter or the ascendant Kalman filter. So we are going to use here today the EKF, but you could use the other way and you will get the same results basically. And Matthew already answered about that, that's good. Thank you, Matthew, you are right. Uh, which one is better for localization? Yeah, okay, already answered. Danny Das is late. Mm, Danny Das, you are late. No, no problem, Danny. You, you can take check the link above on the chat. And then, uh, what else? Hello, subscribe today. Greek content. Okay, thanks, Matthew. You're welcome. Okay, we are up, up to date. Okay, let's continue. Let's go. Let's go. So we have the simulation. Now, uh, let's, let's have a look at how the odometry looks at present. Okay, so for that, we need to run the RBS, the odometry that the robot is already uh, creating, um, publishing. So let's run the RBS uh, visualization system. For that, we need to have a shell, go to tools and open the shell. Then on the shell, you open the shell, then you have to launch this command that is called rosrun rbis rbis and then the rbis is going to start and i probably you know already but let me explain you cannot see the rbis here appearing here because this is a web interface so it's something a little bit just a small more complicated but not so complicated in order to see the rbis window you we have provided here a tool that is called tools then go to graphical tools then okay sometimes this happens just press login and then we should see here the rbis yeah here we have uh, let me put it in the uh, whole screen here okay if you got this like it's not centered the rbis you see that it's not centered you can do a double click on the blue line and then it will center automatically. But anyway, let's load the configuration file I have included here. It's in order to go faster, okay? So go to file in the RBS and then say open config. Here, if this is not the directory that the config file is. We need to go one directory up, then use this button here to go one up. And here you will see the other config RBS. Select that one and then open. Uh, you can discard, we don't need anything. And here we have, okay, so I have already configured all this in order to show us the different odometries that we are going to see today here. And the first one that you can see is the odometry provided by the simulator, by the robot in the simulation. And as you can see, it's like a fixed odometry is there, is I am here, is saying, okay, the robot is super sure. Yeah, because in the odometry in the in the simulator is quite of perfect. It's almost perfect. So what we are going to do is to make this less perfect. I have included here. Let me put this instead of full screen. I'm going to actually I'm going to detach this and put it into another tab in order to detach the whole graphical tools window. You press this button here the first icon from the left, and then it creates a new tab. And then you will get this message, but this is because it's something still we still need to improve. You need to close the previous one, okay? So go to the original tab, close that one, and now you can come here and press login. Okay, 
So that's easier, isn't it? So we have the R base. In case that you have two screens, you can detach this step and put on the other screen, and that's super cool. It's very, it's very nice to have in different tabs. But now, let's go back here again. So um, let's launch a noisy autumn package. This is a package I have included here. It's very simple ROS code, OK? I have it created in Catkin workspace here. Go to source. And then you can see here the noisy autumn package that it contains a Python program that basically what it does is, is very simple. It just subscribes to the odometry topic, then gets the odometry, then adds some random uniform noise into the, uh, into the XY components, uh, actually only onto the, into the I, Y, sorry. And then it publishes this noise uh, with noise odometry into another topic that is called noisy autumn. Okay, so, so we do that in order to get some noise and see how the IMU inside the robot localization is filtering all that and helping to have a better odometry. Yes, so let's launch this in order to see the, uh, the, the noise, the odometry that is being having noise, because now if we go here to the RBs, you can see that it's very stable. Yes? OK, so let's go and launch this package. How do we do that? Uh, we need another shell, because this one is already occupied with the RBs, and we cannot close it. But let me minimize this. Remember that when you minimize, you can come here, and you will see here the, the icons that you have launched already. Well, now we need another shell, so go to Tools, Shell, and open here. And let's launch this package. How do we launch? Uh, in this case, this package, I didn't create a launch file. I create just uh, the Python, so we need to use a ROS run command. Then you can you have the ROS command there. I'm, I'm typing at the same time. So ROS run, name of the package is noisy autumn, and then name of the Python file, the Python note, at noise. And um, yeah, at noise.py. Let me check if there is. It's, it's a strange because it's not recognizing .py. OK, so yeah, somehow oh, maybe I forgot to, to provide the permissions for executable. Yeah. So the, sorry for that. Guys, we need to go to the add noise package and provide it with execution permissions. So this is not explained on the notebook. Please go with me. You have to do first raw CD to noisy autumn slash source. Then here we have our Python package. OK, Python code, sorry. Then you have to execute this command, chmod space plus x. This means change this file with execution permissions. Then we have to indicate which file, add noise.py. That's it. Now we can do the ROS run. So if I go back, ROS run, noisy autumn, add noise. And there it is. There it is. It has already started and is generating this. How do I do that? Well, because if we go to the graphical to the RBs window, you can see that now all those odometry values that are randomly generated. So now the robot doesn't actually know where is exactly on, on the Y axis, OK? So only on the Y axis. Well, that's just an example, OK? Imagine that your noise, uh, your odometry is very noisy. So that's an example. Great. So far, so good. Uh, let me check channel questions. OK, somebody says, uh, their compute, hello, you are here. Great. Then it says, uh, Matthew says, I had to run raw score to get RBs to work. That is not correct, Matthew. If that, you are suffering that, it means that you haven't launched the simulation or you had a problem with the simulation. Because when you launch the simulation, it will run a raw score. So um, then check that. 
Um, then about problem of the CH mode, yeah, okay. Made the Python executable, yeah. So we are in business, great. Let's continue then. So now let's let's make the robot localization uh, code to work. So the good thing is that robot localization is already working. The only thing that we need to do is to configure properly for our robot. Here we are going to see an example for this summit, but the same steps apply to your robot. Okay, it's very simple. You, you just need to change the name of the topics, the, the type of sensor, those things. So, okay, we are going to see how to do that. Then uh, for that, in any case, we need to create a launch file and then we are going to put it inside a package. Okay, we are going to do it properly. Great, so let's go. Let's open another shell because this one with the noisy autumn is already uh, taken. So I'm going to minimize and launch another one shell. Yeah, you know, if you are working with ROS, you need a lot of shells. We are working on an improvement for the system where you will be able to launch several shells in the same window, so you don't have to be uh, going to tools and having separate windows in kind of terminator for the web. Well, we'll see. Okay, so uh, let's go. Wh where do we create this package? Well, we have to create any package. It has to be inside a Catkin workspace. And here you can see that we have the simulation workspace, the notebook workspace, the data set workspace, and the Catkin workspace, and AI workspace. So where do we put the code that will run on the robot? The code has to be inside the Catkin workspace. Okay. The others are for other workspaces for other things. So inside the Catkin workspace, we need to go there inside source and create our package. For that, you have all the commands here. Just follow those. I'm going to go move myself a little bit. So in order to reach the, the final goal. So just execute those commands that go to the lo proper location, then use Catkin workspace, a Catkin create package, and then the name of the package. It has to be like this, summit on the score odometry. Please use the same name. Okay, otherwise it won't work. Then let's go inside the summit odometry and create two directories, one for a launch file. And then you use this command, mkdir launch, and another one for a config. For It's a directory where we'll put the config, okay? So, so far so good. So we have created a new package and two directories inside a package. Then Let's go to the IDE and I'm going to do one thing with the IDE. I'm going also to put in another tab, okay? So I'm going to press this icon and then it should show here. Great. Then uh, here, if I see here the source, you can see here inside the Kaki workspace, we have the summit odometry. So open it and then inside config, uh, first, inside launch, sorry, inside launch, create a new file. And this file has to be called like this. Um, let's go here to the notebook back and close this one, this ID, we don't need it. So let's call it like this, star underscore filter dot launch. Okay, copy that name and go to the browser and say, hey, new file with this name. Okay. So there it is, and it's empty. What are we going to put there? Well, the commands necessary to launch the robot localization package. So come here and then copy all that. I'm going to sh explain you what it is, okay? So just copy the content of this cell and go to the user, uh, to the star filter launch, and then paste it there. There it is. So what does it does? Um, let me see how can I make this bigger. So this is the, the new, <laughs> this is the new um, IDE that we have integrated. And now uh, let me see, how can I, I don't remember where we have to, okay, sorry. So <laughs> I don't remember where to increase the size of the, of the, of the fonts. So that's what we have today. I will figure out the next day. So uh, 
then what do we do? We launch just the node of the package robot localization. And then which one of those? Well, inside the robot localization, we have the EKF localization node of the UKF. In this case, we are launching the EKF. So it's an AKF uh, common filter, I mean, an extended common filter. Okay, so that's it. So the only thing that we do is to launch this from the robot localization. And that's the name, okay? We are assigning to the node. That's the name. Then additionally, we are loading a file that contains the configuration for that node. This is the configuration is where we are going to specify for our own robot. Okay, so let's go and let's create that. What are we going to create there? Well, this file, as you can see, it has to be located inside the summit odometry package slash config. Okay, so we, we are great because it's, it's just here. So we need to create this file, ekflocalization.yam file inside the config directory. Go there, right click, new file, and uh, copy this. Uh, oh, I didn't copy before. Let me copy here. Or oh, you can go to the notebook also, it's there. So I'm just copying the name of the file. Then I'm going to config, do a new file, and put that name, ekf underscore localization.yam. Please respect the names, otherwise it's not going to work at the end. Great. Well, you have the name here, okay, also of the file. You have it here in the notebook. Uh, I'm, I'm going more or less following the notebook, you know, but the thing is that I have written myself, so I know what is, is in there. And so maybe I will skip some things, but you can come back always because this is material that you already have. It's for you always, so you can come back and use it and check it. So what is the configuration file going to have? Well, it's going to have everything that is here in this cell. So what you can do is to click here, select the whole content of the cell, select that and copy, then Control C and then go back to the EKF localization YAM and then paste it there. Okay, so I have pasted here and that is it. So now we have, you can see that there are some question marks around there. That's the things that we are going to need to fill along this class. Okay, yes, so far, so good. Okay, great. Let me see if there is any question. Uh huh. Well, it's, this is starting to become a, with a lot of questions and uh, <laughs> we'll need to figure out a better way of answering because uh, every time that I come here to the chat, there are so many questions that I get lost. I don't know from where to start. Um, mm -hmm. Ricardo, could you please explain what are exactly the pink arrows? Ah, okay, yes, that's a good question, uh, Diego. Yes, so let me, uh, I understand that they are noise, but why there isn't a single moving arrow? Okay, yes, so that's a very good question. Okay, and I see that Epson is answering, and afterwards it says, Diego, change the key value of the noisy odometry to a smaller value, about five, should do the trick. Yes, very good, Epson. Hello, Epson, that you are there. Nice to, to have you on the, on the class. Um, Epson, for all of you who doesn't know, he was one of the interns of, at the Construct and almost was working for the company in full time. It was almost, but at the end it was not possible, but he was one of the creators of some of the notebooks of the previous live classes. And we were together there. So nice to have you here on the, on the live class, Epson. So uh, your question is, uh, Diego, it's about why so many uh, pink arrows. Yes, that is why. This is because this parameter here that says keep. So you can put keep one, for example, and then you will get the la latest noisy odometry. So that is the, you, you can see that is moving. Then because we said keep, then we got all the one, last 100 were printed. All, only the last 100. So that is why. And then in pink, 
is the it's the arrow that is representing the current position the the current odometry okay in the noisy in the, in the noisy topic okay so it's the the actual one the red one is the odometry that is computed by the simulator it's perfect is there and then we have created this noisy version and it's this pink one okay so that that you can see many many there there was a, a mother of visualization and this is something that you have to master in ROS. okay you, you need to master how to play with all those parameters in order to get the information that you need to solve the problem okay so that's also important well anyway let's continue and let's go for the next thing so in order to 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 fill this file remember we have to modify the the question marks okay so for that uh, first thing is to indicate the reference frames so those are the frames from which we are going to measure and some of the measures that are there the first one is the base link frame and that is the frame that is the center of the robot itself then uh, in this case we know that the center of the robot is called base link Mm -hmm. so we i have written here okay so you need to specify where is the center of the robot where is it, this the frame that is at the center of the robot that's a base link so we should put this on this file config file so go there and check where it says base link okay is the second option here but just do it so write base underscore link so how do i know that this is like that is because if we go to Arbis, we can add, for example, the TF to the Arbis. If I go to add, I'm going to check the TF. TF, okay. And then all the links of the robot are going to appear there. And then if you move around there, for example, and another trick for better virtualization is to make the model of the robot quite transparent so if you go to robot model here and open the configuration you can see uh, for example is the alpha value that is one but you can say for example 0 0.3 and then you will see that it's quite transparent okay so then it is not bothering you to watch the uh, the different frames and also you can see that there are so many frames there that they don't allow you to see everything. So you can come to TF and then check which ones do you want to see on the frame. So you go down, go to frames. It says all enabled. I want to be all them printed there. So just remove that. And then you have to check which one could it be the base link frame based on the names okay so that's how it works and then you say oh base link that's quite suspicious that base link should be base link please call me sherlock because this i'm so clever for that then you can click here and check if it's actually the base link and then, and then in this case you can see that it is uh sorry i i confused the key and there it is so it's almost at the center of the robot so that's our base link then the same procedure you do with all the others that we need here uh, another one is the odom frame this is the frame that is used to report the odometry and it's called odom you follow the same procedure and you will get that is odom then the map frame this is the frame that any localization system like the ones that we have launched on the previous classes it's running and it's indicating the global position of the robot in a map, in a kind of map. That would be also possible for a GPS uh, data. Okay, so in this case, we don't have any, so we don't need that one. It's because we don't have a localization system running. And then finally, this is a wall frame. This is a frame that is going to be used for uh, referencing in an absolute uh, coordinates system. Uh, it's like the it's like the i don't know how to say it without saying the word the word wall but it's like the the frame of the wall in which you are going to measure your robot because we don't have a map frame 
then our wall frame has to be the autumn frame. It's the only one that we have that is measuring in absolute coordinates, not in relative to the robot. I know that this is quite confusing and it would take a long time to explain that in better way. So just take this rule. If you have a localization system, then the wall frame has to be the same as this one. If you don't have it, then the wall frame has to be the same as other. Okay, this is too simplified now. Okay, so now we have this configuration. Let's go to our IDE and do it. Then wall frame, we are going to say Odom. Odom frame, we are going to say Odom. And then map frame, um, you can just remove. Or uh, we are going to put also Odom. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, now I don't remember if it's needed. Let's remove it. Yeah, let's remove it. That's it. Let's remove it. I think that it's it's going to work like that. Then uh, what else do we need? So we need to complete the Odom configuration and the IMU configuration. So for that, um, what is that? So now we need to add the sensors that we want to fuse. In our case, we want to add the odometry and the IMU, but we could add more things, as I mentioned before. So for any sensor that you want to add for your fusing, for fusing the information, then you have to create a section like this. Okay, so a section like this. Then on the first thing you have to indicate is the topic, is the name of the topic that provides you with this information. Okay, in this case, for the odometry, we know that is slash odom. Then, then you have to provide this config matrix, okay, for every one of the sensors that you want to add. One for the odometry, and here we are going to do the same for the IMU, okay? Uh, stay with me for that. So how does this matrix work, those values? Well, it looks complicated, but it actually not. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I made a mistake here. And, <laughs> and that is why I have written here, because in my test, I was doing the same mistake. <coughs> it's that actually we are not providing the odometry from the autumn topic, but from our noisy autumn topic. Okay, so come here and change it. Yeah, of course, because we know that the odom is already great odometry. Now we want to see the effect of the filter on the noisy autumn. Okay, so great. So we put it there. And for the IMU, let's let's put that one. It's IMU slash data. So you can do it like this. IMU slash data. Okay, so what about now the, the matrix? Well, it's the matrix, that matrix is representing these values here. So first is the position in X, Y, and Z in the space. Second is the roll pitch and Joe uh, rotations of the robot, so the orientation of the robot in the space. Then is the speed in X, Y, and Z of the robot. Also the angular speed in each one of the axes and then the linear acceleration. Okay, so what that matrix says is for each one of those values, you have to indicate either false or true. If you indicate true, it means that this variable is going to be taken into account in the common filter. If you indicate false, then this variable is not going to be taken into the common filter to mix with the other signals in, in order to get a better odometry. Okay, so that's basically. Then for an odometry provided from a wheel encoder, the proper matrix is the one that shows here. So it means that we are going to take into account the velocities in X, the velocity in y and the angular velocity in z. Okay, why why is that? That's a little bit complicated, but let me let me try to explain. Okay, so 
the odometry from a wheel encoder it's providing two things it's providing the x y and z values and the velocity in x y and z yes so that is right how do i know that, that well because if i go to the topic of the here of the odometry and do a ross topic echo minus n1 just to check then i do uh, of odom then you will see that we can have the twist that is the speed and then the pose that is the position in all that information then what happened here that both data are actually being generated from the same encoders so because we don't have a sensor of a speed in the robot so this speed is computed from the post changes in the wheels so is the same information both of them so for the common filter is no need to provide one of them and then based on experience it looks like if you provide the velocities it's better okay so then we have to provide the velocities here and we are not providing the z velocity because the robot cannot move up so that's no sense and also the robot if you know it's a differential robot it can only move in x direction so why do we provide this because we know that in in y is going to be zero so we provide that in zero it's even so in order to stabilize a little bit Okay, so we provide the x and y in velocities and linear velocities and then z in angular velocity because the robot can only turn in the z angle so that is why we have here this true and all the rest is going to be false so you can directly copy this and put it there on the actually the whole thing and substitute here the matrix of the odometry okay great so now we have to do the same thing for the imu data then how would it be in that case for the imu we have the angular velocity in z that is the of course because the robot is rotating and this is measured by the imu and then the linear acceleration in x linear acceleration in x yeah because the robot is only be able to move uh, to accelerate into the x axis because it's a is a differential robot then uh, so what how would it be the the matrix i haven't put it here but you should say something give me any answer there give me some answer in the meantime i'm drinking some coffee it's already very cold but okay so then you have uh, uh uchenna you have the problem that uh, you cannot uh, find the executable is because you don't have the uh, you don't have the the permissions in the file and then cheryl is providing you with the commands that you need to, to do in order to provide that and real gsk says that all the entries are false except the last row almost almost real almost but not remember we have to provide something in angular velocity and something in linear acceleration so there are two rows and actually we are only interested on the angular velocity is only in z because the robot can only turn in z and linear acceleration is only interested in x because the robot is only moving forward or backward in the x axis that means okay so i see no solution here then let's go because it's getting late then uh, what how it has to be well it has to be um, angular velocity which one it corresponds angular velocity it corresponds here to the fourth row and then in that case it says it's in z so that would be the same case like this row in in the odometry only for that 
for that row is the same as for the odometry. And then we have the linear acceleration in X. So that would be that this one is true and all the rest is false. And the rest is everything false. That for the odometry, okay? So let me, in order to make it simpler, I'm going to copy this and just modify. Okay, and let me show you how it looks. So if I go here, then it's everything is false. This is even false. This is even false. Except this component here that is true, that this is the um, angular velocity in Z. Okay? And then this one that is the linear acceleration in X. This is true also. So everything is false except on the fourth and fifth row on those values. Okay, I hope that it is, is clear. Okay, and then, uh, okay, so that's it. Then we need to specify also those matrices. Yes, so those matrices are provided in order to better compute the noise. The first one is for the noise of the data in the, uh, the, the noise of the data in the, in the noise of the data in the, in, in the sensor values, this one. And the second one is to, is the covariance of the initial state of the robot. Then um, I've never used this. I never um, actually tune it and use it only this default configuration in most of the cases. It is true that I have always been working with the simulations, but I, I haven't seen anybody that is reporting about how changing those values, have they improved in any way. But they are provided here in order for you to tune. So if you get into trouble, you don't get good results, then you will need to tune those matrices. And that's a heavy work. That's heavy work. And I'm checking that I see here that looks like there is a problem uh, here because there is a kind of comment. So this is not correct. This, uh, you, you see that there are some um, um, commas here. I don't know how to say in English. Well, this symbol here, after process noise covariance. So you have to remove that because that's not correct in any way. So please remove it because otherwise this will have some errors. Okay, so uh, we have everything configured now with many default values that I'm not getting into that. So you, you will have to go into the robot localization documentation to get it. And now it's time that we launch this code. Remember, we have created this summit odometry um, package and this launch file that is going to load this config file uh, sorry, this config file that we have created here. So let's do it. Then in another shell, this one that is not being used, we can just launch, rocks launch, summit underscore odometry, summit odometry, and then start filter. Start filter, yeah, there it is. So let's go. Let's go. Sorry, <laughs> I had some delay here. Okay, let's go. Great. So now it's starting here and it's loading the EKF localization. Here we have, could not read sensor update configuration for topic of them. Um, expected type seven, expected seven. Okay. Okay, we have an error here. So don't get confused by this warning here. That's nothing related to it. But it says that could not set sensor update configuration. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me check. What do we have here? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm checking if there is any problem. Let me see. Uh, 
I don't know. Uh, it, I, it looks correct. Everything looks correct here. And so it only says this uh, error, this error, but it's not indicating. Uh, let me check if this, uh, let me check if it is actually publishing. So let's open this but it looks like it's not publishing so we should see if there is a noisy um, unfiltered uh, topic that is being published let's see so let's open another terminal and let's check it's opening and here any question any uh, i'm checking here on the chat then uh, says, Panagiotis uh, says, if the robot sleeps, will it not move to the Y2? Yes, that's a very good question, Panagiotis. But that would be an error. So that has to be filtered. And then, yeah, sorry, but the odometry will not measure that. So you will get. Um, um, you will get an error in Y, and but the odometry will not be aware because the odometry is not able to compute movements to the Y. So, but this will be detected by the IMU. And that is what the uh, Kalman filter is doing, fusing those two informations. And this movement to the Y is being detected by a change in the acceleration. Then Haro says, didn't we forget about your orientation in IMU config matrix? Mm. No. Why? Why this? Okay, wait, wait a second. Too many things. So getting some problems here in the system. Okay, come on. A anybody is getting any different result? Please show me. So here I have the the terminal. Let me see if we have the topic of the uh, see if it is actually working, uh, running the 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 node. And then we should see the autumn filter. And uh, here it is the autumn filter. Let's see. So the topic has been published, but it, do, it doesn't mean that it's publishing data properly. So let's do a raw topic echo of Autumn filtered. Autumn slash filtered. And let's see if it is publishing any data, but it's actually not. So this means that it is not publishing data. And uh, the question, uh, wait, so what is? Sensor could not read sensor update configuration for talking peak autumn zero. Uh, and let me see why it's not, but, but this is correctly noisy autumn. Uh, maybe I, I wrote this incorrectly. Autumn zero, autumn zero config, IMU zero, IMU zero config. Yeah, that, that is correct. Yes. And uh, those parameters are by default, uh, so they are already correct. So they, it's it's working properly. So I don't know. Let me reduce a little bit the frequency of this and try to launch it again. But but I don't think that it's that is the problem. Mm hmm. I cannot uh, publish the FTF on Confi zero. So here looks like something strange here. Let me see if by copying this, I have introduced any, any strange character, something. I don't see. I, I, it looks to me like it's correct, everything. Mm, okay. 
Yeah, so we need to go. We need to go to the documentation. Let me check. And then uh, I have check, I'm checking here the, your question just to see if you have any comment related. Then Cheryl is, is saying, I get the error in valid frame configuration. The values from map frame, model frame, and base link must be unique. Okay, so yes. So uh, Cheryl, you probably have a problem in the frames. So you haven't indicated proper frames. In my case, I have removed the map frame and I think that that's, it, that's okay. That is okay. Didn't we set as autumn frame, autumn base link frame, base link and wall frame autumn? That is correct. That is correct. But uh, and what did you say in map frame, Sherry? Uh, Diego is reporting that he's getting the same result as me. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is correct. This is correct. Okay, let me do one test. I'm going to check this. I put only Odom, but it's complaining about the whole, the both of them. So um, it looks like there is something strange there. Let me check this. If it's complaining for Odom, but here it's complaining about the both Odom and IMU, and it's a strange that is complaining about those two. Okay, let me check. Is yes. okay, navigation message? Let me see if the for some reason those type of messages are, do not correspond to these ones here. Let me check. So raw stop picking for of Odom. It has to be navigation message, odometry. So that is correct. The type yes, of course, because we have been plotting it. And for the IMU data, the same IMU data is the same. Sensor message IMU, that is one of the accepted. This is the list of accepted type of messages that robot localization is accepting. Okay, so that's correct also. So, and both of them, they are publishing because we check. And let me check, odometry. Uh, no, noisy. Well, we have been seeing that already. So noisy autumn, it's publishing. Yes. And the same for IMU slash data. See, yes, it's publishing. And it says frame ID base for print. Oh, okay. Okay, wait, let me see. It's let me change this instead of base link let me change for base footprint but it's, it's not that's not correct because there is a transfer between base link and base footprint but I, because i don't know what is the problem so i i have to check you know i have to test different things and let me see let me see if that works in the meantime, let me see any suggestions here. Check the first line of Odom Zero config, says Epson. And Istiliano says, in Odom config, you need to have false, 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 you need some commas. Okay, that could be, yes. Okay. Let me see. It says, oh yes, that is right, of course. There is a comma here at the end of every one, of course. <laughs> That's it. Very good, Estilianos. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Yes. So in all of them, actually, in IMU, in all the sensors. So we need to add this comma there. Then I'm going to change this back to base link. Save and then come back here and launch it again. And in the meantime, see uh, Cheryl. Uh, yeah, you are still getting your error. Okay. And then Diego is also reporting the same thing. Um, then also, um, 
Benjamin is also reporting the same thing. Very good, very, very good at the details, guys. Super cool, super cool. Thank you very much for helping me on that. And yeah, so we have it there. Now let's check if it's actually publishing. Cheryl, I'm going to go with you, okay? Don't, don't, don't think that I forgot it you so with your problem so let's see and ross a big echo of other filtered oh it's not publishing okay and here let's see in this case i have also included another config for the other that is showing the uh, autumn filter okay and it should appear in blue so we should see a narrow in blue and we don't see that so because it's not publishing of course and let me see uh, then here looks like it's correct let me check if i have also modified something here in the meantime and i didn't properly okay so here is the uh, autumn i have to change back to Noisy Odom. Noisy Odom and IMU, IMU data. That is correct. Okay, so let's go. Let me keep it. Yeah, but it should have been this error. This change I, I just made is not the one that is causing this error that is not publishing. So um, still nothing. Still not publishing because it should appear here. And it doesn't complain about anything. And uh, let me see if this uh, here are some problems here. And um, no. It is correct. This is correct. And okay, guys. So I don't know what is actually happening. And I need to. I need to to have some time to find the, the error for that. Let me see if I'm missing something. If I'm missing something. Is here no. Let me check. Let me check a, an example of robot localization config file. If I am doing something wrong here, but in theory it is it is correct. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Mm. Okay, is a launch file and basic robot localization. It's uh, mm. okay, so guys, I cannot find the error right here, right now. And then I will need to check step by step every one of the, the parameters here because. I cannot see where is the, the problem. I cannot see. There was a problem here with the two hyphens and I'm checking here that the matrices are correct, but the system is not complaining. So it actually should produce this data. It should produce because the topics are producing. They are correct here and Yes, so let's, I don't know, I'm going to add the map frame also. I don't know if just this stupid removing this and, and set as the autumn also. And let, let me test that, but I don't think that this is the, the problem, really. Uh, let's see. And otherwise I will have to yeah, invalid frame. Yeah, the values for map frame modem. So this is the error that you are having, um, Sheryl. This is the error that you are having. And this is indicating because the map frame 
cannot be set to the same as the other two. So that is why I remove it, because otherwise I have to put indicate map, but map doesn't exist. If I add the map frame, I don't know, I'm going to test that, but I, I don't think so. So uh, probably, Cheryl, what happens to you is that you have the map frame is still there and you have set to another another already existing frame. Try that, check that you don't have the map. Okay, so now it's already running, but still not, not uh, publishing the odometry. Still not publishing, okay. So it's getting very late and we'll have to close here. Let me see. Odometry, filter it. Yes. Uh, you, you say that it's... Od ah, odometry, filter it. <laughs> no way. Don't tell me that that is the error. Odometry, filter it. Uh, 